Welcome to Successful Living with Bill Knappick. Every week we talk about success and everything that goes along with it. Successful Living with Bill Knappick is on right now. Welcome to the show, Successful Living with Bill Knappick, and today with Donnie Boutwell. He is the CEO of Media Systems, and we are at the Media Systems Studio right here in Houston, Texas, the fourth largest city in the United States. Donnie, welcome to the show. Thanks, Bill. Really great to be here. And when we say media systems, people, that could mean a lot of things to people. Sure. Certainly people here in town know you very well. But let's tell people, in case they don't know about Media Systems, let's tell them first about your company. Well, we, my uncle started our company in 1980, and uh, it was home technology as best as it could be back then. But things, of course, have evolved over the years, and so as things have changed, we've become an automation company. We still do the home theaters and hi-fi and music systems and um, uh, surveillance cameras, security, all of the techie things that have been around for a long time, but um, I think our industry has really evolved to controls, and what we really do is we make it easy for you to live in your home with all of the technology that's around you. And when you say the word controls, there are yeah. so many controls yeah. in our lives just <laughs> yeah. to, to, for TV when we want to mo- watch a movie. You're sure. talking about video surveillance, our security cameras and things. Yep. It really, it, it, it almost has become an art for us to manage our our operation and and monitoring of all the different things we yeah, have that sure. have that are controlled well, it's fascinating it's like cars you know in the in the old days you get a car and pull it up under the shade tree and open the hood and do what you need to do but i would never open the hood of my own car today i, I had a car <laughs> yeah, for two years i don't know that i ever opened yeah, the hood. Yeah. yeah and that's how home automation systems have changed now the we like to joke that the the worst part about diy home stuff is that you have to do it yourself Um, and a lot of those things are fun but it could end up being a project what we do is more of an on a professional level where we have integrated systems that are designed to work together uh, and really just be one umbrella one app one touch panel that does all of the things that you're trying to do in your home I think what's also interesting is, as I think about my involvement with electronics, I've always liked gadgets and technical yep. things and uh-huh. electronics, cameras, recorders, things like that, but not everybody does. So you are working in a world where some people, different degrees of where they're able to and want to yeah, absolutely. deal with these things. And you have some yeah. people, I'm sure, that are just like, look, it's got to be super simple. And that's mm-hmm. what you're there to help all these people. Yeah, and I, I one of the things that comes up with that is the idea of values you know that um, not everybody that walks in the door feels strongly about each different thing you know I could have a guy drive up in a three hundred thousand dollar car and then I tell him well these speakers in the ceiling are usually about 500 pair and this actually happened he looked at me and said 500 a pair are you kidding five hundred dollars and I know he's got like fifteen hundred dollars on his feet right now But $500, he didn't think that was worth that for a pair of ceiling speakers. So we have to get to know people, figure out what their values are, what they care about. Because the same guy would write us a blank check for Wi-Fi. To him, the most important thing was I need to be able to get on the network anywhere in the house, have it be the same network, have it be rock solid, have it be as fast as it can possibly be. And he didn't care what that cost. But on speakers, that wasn't important to him. So getting to know people and what are their values, what do they care about. Maybe they care mostly about cameras and surveillance and security. Maybe they're uh, entertainment buffs and they want to be able to watch movies and listen to music. Whatever it is, we just have to get to know them and, and tailor a system that fits what they're looking for. And a company like yours is even is so much more important today mm-hmm. and for the future. And we'll get to that. But when we think about successful living, yeah. your business has been very good. You work at it, your wife, you work at it as a team. Yeah. But let's tell people how you even got here, because I think your story yeah. is interesting. Yeah. You, you have a varied background. You still do a lot of things. So let's mm-hmm. tell people how you even got here to well, begin it's, with. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a hard road. And I think if I could encourage anybody about um, what I've gone through that, you know, an, an old guy said to me when I was very young, you need to work like it all depends on you and then pray like it all depends on him. And that's what we've done, really. And so going back, um, you know, around uh, year 2000, 2001, um, 
I had a had a background uh, in. I studied music and I studied broadcast production in college, and I had an opportunity to come on at Second Baptist working in their uh, broadcast studio, and so that was really a good time for me. But I was I was it was it was a dark time too, and I was struggling with myself and who I was and what I was going to do with my life. And I had a friend that called and said, um, "Do you want to go on the road playing drums for Bebo Norman, who at the time was kind of a you know big Christian artist guy?" And uh, you know you grow up playing drums, and uh, you know your whole life all you want is to live on a bus and tour around, right? Until you do. <laughs> Until you do. <laughs> oh my gosh! It was just it was a combination between the movie um, Groundhog Day. I don't know if you remember that Bill Murray, where it's yeah, the same day over so. and over yeah, and over yeah. and over, and camping, which I hate camping. <laughs> and for an hour a day, you get to play the drums. And um, so after that experience, I realized the road was not for me. And the, what I'd rather, I thought I'd rather be in production. And so I moved to Nashville at the end of that. And I, everybody, I only knew 11 people when I moved to Nashville. And so every new person that I met, I said. And at this point, you're single, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I was single at the time. <clears throat> and every new person that I met in Nashville, I shook their hand and said, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a record producer. And I said, oh, that's great. Well, who have you worked with? And I said, well, probably not anybody you've heard of, mostly independent artists from Texas, where I come from and all that. But, you know, I'm working right now. So what are you doing? You know, and within a few months, I was making a living as a record producer. And uh, it was a lot of fun, and it was just not very lucrative. Um, uh, and so I, that was, and I did that for about eight years. So we get to about 2008, and the economy is beginning to tank, and the disposable income is going away for that group of people. And so I, I just knew I had to do something else. Jack and I met on the road and uh, were friends for a couple of years, and we got married in 2005 and started having kids. And then it was, you know, I, my dream for my life is to be a dad and take care of my children. That's my real dream. Now, I love doing something technical. I love doing something um, creative, you know. Um, but I, I had to provide for my family. I had to figure out a way to do that. And uh, in the music business, it's, it was just tough. I mean, we were $100,000 in debt when we, when we decided we had to give that up. And so for me, it was the prodigal son. I, I called my uncle and I, you know, basically begged him for anything that he was willing to offer me. And he was in Houston, Texas, where we are now. Correct. Yeah. And he had started this company in 1980. And, um, you know, I'd gr grown up around it and seen it develop and evolve over the years, but hadn't worked in it. Um, and I'm telling you, man, it was it was the prodigal son. It was the lowest guy on the totem pole. And I uh, and I would t I took that job, which my first day on the job was once you see if you can go help uh, help this guy carry something, you know, because he knew I didn't know how to do anything. And he uh, actually I think he really thought I hadn't worked a day in my life until I worked for him, um, which was different kind of work. I mean, I feel like I worked very hard at the music business. I worked very hard at something that was never going to really pay off for me. It's such a small percentage of people that are able to make a good living from doing that. And so over the years, I'd, I had every job. I was the helper. And then I was the installer. And then I was a lead installer. Then I started to become a system designer. And at one point, the guy that was doing programming for lighting left. And so I, I went to classes and learned how to do that, started programming lights. Then I learned about networks and started programming networks. And uh, then our lead AV programmer left, which is the hardest thing to do. And I had to figure that out. And um, it, was a t it was a tough road, tough road. And um, you know, I'd get home from work and I'd sit down on the couch with my laptop and crack open the code and just immerse myself in it. It was 24 seven, just trying to learn it and trying to figure it out. And so then, um, that gets us to about 2010 or so. So, so let me ask you yeah. this. When was the first, when you were carrying the boxes, what year was that? Um, Curious. that would have been, um, uh, to, uh, 2009. Yeah, the beginning. Okay, of so you've come a long way, no yeah. doubt about it. But the other thing to point yeah. out that people may not be thinking about, mm -hmm. and that is the things that you have your head around now mm -hmm. and the kind of systems that you're implementing, yeah. they're very complex. Yeah. Certainly the idea going through walls with wires and yeah. hiding wires right, right there, that is a certain art and yeah. has a, a level of difficulty and precision. Yeah. 
in addition to know the networks, mm -hmm. all these things. I mean, sometimes we have trouble with our cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> and but that's why today people need your services, especially yeah. when when we talk about the more complex systems and. I mean, just sometimes it's hard just to get a Wi-Fi signal for in sure. our home. Yeah, and that, it has a lot to do with the size of the house, you know. Um, it, while we do work in smaller homes around here, um, uh, the, the, once your house gets to be 4,000 feet or better, um, you're going to have a hard time getting this equipment to work without the right infrastructure. That's a big part of it. And I also want to tell people, yeah. too, to give give them an idea. Yeah. You have been in some of the who's who's homes all around <laughs> Houston and beyond. Yeah. Very uh, yeah. A certain kind of clientele. Yeah. Many of them just say, make it work, give us this, and money's not an object. Yeah. But the interesting <laughs> thing is that you're able to, from a customer service standpoint, mm -hmm. satisfy a demanding client number one, but yeah. also be able to provide the technology and to and then translate it to them so that when you're gone, when you yeah. leave and say, oh, here's your your security system, your theater or whatever, mm -hmm. that they're able to do it when you leave. Yeah. And, Take care of it. And it, it really takes a team to do that. You know, th that's one thing about the way my uncle did this is that it was a different um, it, w it was a different industry years ago, and now, um, you know, he was able to be the one-man show where he designed the job, uh, helped install the job, helped do the service and all that, and there were years where the company grew, where he had a lot of people, and years where he didn't have all those people, but he, he uh, had his fingers in the job all the way to the end and knew every part of it, and I feel like the way that things have changed now um, I really can't do that. I've, I've got some incredible people that I've found to, to join our team that do things that I can't even do today. Um, I hired my mentor, the guy that taught me how to do the programming stuff. Um, and uh, so, it, so it's a team. So somebody calls with a service call or they text me and they have an issue. Um, I send that right to Derek, and, and Derek is our service manager, and he's able to handle that and deal with those people, and he's got a certain level of, level of empathy that is perfect for a service person. He wants those people to be taken care of right now. I've got a project manager, so for new installations, Chris will take those, and he'll take our installers out in the field, Brad and Billy and um, Robert and Josh, all those guys out in the field, and he'll uh, help administrate that. Um, and while I've, and, and uh, Brad, Billy, those guys, they could run the job too. I mean, they're just, I've got such amazing talent on our team now that I don't have to do everything, uh, which I couldn't do anyway now at the level that we're at. As John Maxwell says, it takes teamwork to make the dream work. Yeah. And without the right team, it can be a nightmare. That's no right. doubt about that. Also, yeah. we were talking with Donnie Batwell. He is the CEO of Media Systems. Yeah. So, But what you describe, many people that have their own business have began kind of like you do. This is a family business. That's right, yeah. And I just want to write off a random thought here as I'm thinking about your uncle mm -hmm. when he first gives you the assignment. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he had an idea that you would end up, you and your wife, taking over the business and running it in a magnificent way, 24-7. Well, he, if, he, if he had an exit strategy, um, he didn't tell me. So, But when I think that he did, because as I look back, I could see him making sure that I understood how to do each part of the job. And then one day he came in, and we were talking in the morning, and he said, all right, well, y'all are just going to have to figure it out. And he walked out the door. I'm not kidding. That was exit stage right. That was off it. Into the he sunset. said, "You're going to have to figure it out," and he and he left. And you know, Jacqueline and I were looking at each other like, "What just happened?" You know. <laughs> and so then, over the next week, we were taking the meetings, and we borrowed a line from the movie Boiler Room, where um, Ben Affleck says, "Act as if." act as if you're the president of the company yeah. and so we just had to act as if and grow up and um and our company at the time the economy did what it did and we had um, uh, gone from being a larger company to being about five employees and uh, uh so it was a little easier and that may have been part of his strategy is to let it go there but since then uh, uh over the last five years we've more than tripled our business and we have um, 12 full-time employees we we're interviewing two more people this week and it's just really been an organic growth and change for us 
Um, so we're, we're just really happy to be where we're at now. But no, we had no idea that we were actually going to be running the show here. And certainly this time of year, and I, I believe it should be done periodic, periodically through the year, but this is a great time or even prior to the month before, yeah. December, November, our times of planning and thinking of, okay, here's where we've been in 2019. Yeah. I'm sure you have thought about where you want to take the company based on the, the clients that you're serving now, the yeah. growth of the business, and that your team sounds like it's pretty tightened up yeah. to be very productive <clears throat> and effective. But where do you want to take this, let's well, say, for this year and, and if you've even yeah. thought of beyond? Yeah, it's a really good question. I, I feel like um, in our industry, we always uh, say that education is a freight train, and if you get off, you're probably going to get hurt because everything is changing so fast. So we spend a lot of time educating our team on networks and Wi-Fi and programming systems and AV and all of that stuff. But we haven't, as an industry, spent much time teaching people about how to work together and about how to be leaders. And that's the big push for me this year because half of the job is the job. That's only half the job. The other half of the job is how do you interact with the homeowner? How do you interact with your coworkers, the people above you and the people below you? Do the people below you want to follow you? Because John Maxwell, to quote him again, position is the lowest form of leadership. Just because I'm called manager doesn't mean I know how to manage or anybody wants to let me manage them. But if we can teach our leaders to, um, to be people of influence, then we'll be in a completely different place. And I feel like we've, we've gotten there. We started last year, we brought in Helen Perry, who is, I don't know if you know her, she's an eti etiquette coach and a, 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 a personal image consultant. And so we've been bringing her in regularly to teach our team, um, how do you act when you walk into somebody's home? This is their home. So you take your shoes off or you put the, put the booties on or you ask them, is it okay to park here? You let them know how long you're gonna be there. You shake their hand, you look at them in the face, all that kind of stuff. So we've already been starting to work on this. But this year our big push is leadership development to, because we've got to be leaders of leaders. And I don't remember who I heard this from, but I know that um, strong leaders are not afraid of strong leaders. That's what we want. That's right. So we have about four or five minutes left. Mm -hmm. What are the other things? And, and we think about, we were talking about it just uh, before we started this, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las yeah. Vegas always has spectacular things. And I'm sure you go there and yeah. think about, hey, here's where we're at today. What are some of the things that people are going to want? And what are the things that are available? But give us a word or two about the, <laughs> the CES show that yeah. you're fresh back from yeah. and anything else you, and of course, yeah. let's tell people how they can reach yeah, out I'm, to you. I'm going to get my notes out here because uh, we we spent a week at this uh, CES show in Vegas. And we always go over every year to see the TVs because that's where the new things come out. Um, but <clears throat> what it was was a te like a, a, a toy store for the tech enthusiasts is what it was. You wouldn't believe how many things. It was are, well attended, are, too. I saw some yeah, things on TV. Yeah, yeah 175,000, 180,000, something like that, which is huge, huge show. Um, but we learned that you could put the word smart in front of anything, and it would show up at CES. So let me give you a few of these. Um, smart toothbrush. Smart, smart razors, smart mirrors, smart faucets, smart toilets, smart showers, smart bath mats that weigh you and do your body fat when you step out of the shower, um, smart toilets and um, air purifiers, smart beds, smart buttons, smart toasters, smart ovens, smart fryers, smart coffee makers. <laughs> I mean, Everything. It just goes on and on. They even had a pan that they called a smarty pan, and it's like a frying pan that will you know, tell you how you're doing or something. Um, one of my favorite things that I found it was the wearables. Um, uh, smart clothing, shirts, athletic wear, bras, underwear, socks, uh, shoes. Um, but one of the coolest things was this device that you wear like a, a cap or it'll clip to a cap or a VR headset. And what it does is it analyzes your brain so that your mind can control your AR system or VR system. I mean, this is <clears throat> science fiction coming to reality. Well, and today. I remember reading uh, it, or maybe six months ago about or six months to a year how apple is putting you use the term wearables yeah. they're putting a lot of technology and have been yeah. for that future of wearables but yeah. i never thought that it rounds out to things that 
we wear, like clothes that we wear. <laughs> sure. I mean, sure, watches yeah. and, and other yeah. glasses and One so another, forth. One another yeah. that was really cool to me was earpieces that you share it, that are a translator. So if, let's say I'm standing, I'm, uh, we're, we're going to have the opportunity to go to, to Sony in Tokyo um, in, a, in a couple of months. We're really excited to go. And uh, this device, I could wear one and somebody over there could wear one and I could speak English and they That's would hear right. Japanese. Yes. Yes. They could speak Japanese and I would hear English. That is <laughs> so nuts. awesome. We, yeah. it, it, there's no question. We are your company is right there in the fascinating time that we're living in now. Mm -hmm. I mean, people couldn't imagine 60 years ago the things, yeah. maybe 30 years ago. It is incredible what we're doing. Of course, the website is mediasystems.com. Mm -hmm. People can remember that very easily. Mediasystems.com. In fact, they can go, they can go to the website, see some of the things you do. Also, see the team that you're talking about. That's right. As we embark on this 2020. Yep. So, say with the last uh, minute or so, Donnie, what else should people know about Media Systems at Mediasystems.com? Well, um, we're here to help. Uh, we're Pet here. Talk Magazine. Yeah. You're yeah, we're in, in Pet Talk this month. Um, we believe that systems in your home should be easy to use beautifully designed and unbelievably reliable. That's what we're here to do. And, uh, you know, just about successful living, again, work like it all depends on you and pray like it all depends on him. That's it. In fact, I don't know where I am thinking about your dog right now. I'm thinking about <laughs> my dogs. For some reason, we're thinking about Pet Talk Magazine. But I don't know what the reference was. Somebody said where they were talking about someone not comprehending something or a group not comprehending they they use the term it's like dogs watching TV, <laughs> and I love that just that yeah. whole image because you know what dogs may look like they're watching TV yeah. but they're a lot smarter that sometimes yeah. than we give them credit for. There's a lot going on in those yeah. dog heads. That's, I, right. I, that's why I love my dog so much. Yeah, and yours is incredible as well. Yeah, the article is a, a smart dog in a smart home. That's even better. So <laughs> tune in to mediasystems.com look for donnie and his beautiful wonderful wife jacqueline mm -hmm. right there in pet talk magazine is that a january or february issue i know sometimes um, they go I, I it's the one that's out right now the one that's yeah, out right now pet january. talk yeah thank you so much you've been listening to successful living with bill nampic and today our new contributor every month we're going to be hearing from donnie and his wife jacqueline coming up mediasystems.com thank you donnie for being on the show thanks and we'll see you next week <laughs>